Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again back in the fish room or my office. We have news, Humphrey is gone over there. Don't worry. I have decided to escape Humphrey's tank, make it a little bit more pleasant for me and for him, but I had to move him. <laughs> Long time viewers of the channel will know that Humphrey has a bit of an attitude problem and anytime I have my hands in the tank, his number one goal is bite off as much or as many of my fingers as possible and I just couldn't work with the tank with him in it. So we've had to move him over to another tank, just temporarily. It was his old tank, so it's no big hardship for him. Ow. I mean, I love him and all, but he draws blood. Admittedly, I got away quite lightly this time, but yeah, that's why I moved him. But basically, I've taken a new approach to this tank and made some changes, so let me talk you through them. So for a bit of context, this is a five foot tank by two foot by two foot. It is my old discus display tank, which I've repaired, so I've resealed the bottom, put in a new false bottom, liberal amounts of liquid rubber, and that's all good, that's fine. But previously it was completely empty and just had a dusting of sand. I've been doing a bit of reading and talking to a few people who are a bit more experienced with flower horns than me and say that some of them like to not bury themselves, but rest on the sand uh, and they kind of nestle and some of the traits of your fish doing that is they will scope out little holes and hollows and there just wasn't enough sand for them to do that so i think my fish humphrey is one of those fish so we've now got a good deep maybe two to three inches of sand and um, that he can rest in make things a little bit nicer and for me to make things a little bit nicer we've just gone with this kind of rock and flake, fake plant arrangement he is perfectly happy with an empty tank. Most of his um, mental nourishment comes from interacting with me because I sit right in front of this tank. So we, we have chats and play with each other, <laughs> um, but it was quite boring. So I've just gone with a few simple rocks, a couple of bits of wood and some plants, uh, fake plants, obviously, because he will just one chop anything that's live. Um, not all flower horns do this apparently, but Humphrey definitely does. He definitely has the kill instinct for anything that's in his tank. He'll probably try and kill these. Um, so I have picked things that aren't too abrasive, too hard, gone with softer silker plants rather than any of the really tough plasticky ones. So we'll see how we get on with them. And then just, yeah, some rock and some um, bits of wood just to make things a little bit easier uh, on the eye for me, because like I say, he doesn't care that much. Still got loads of swimming room um, and space either side. Like I say, it's two foot front to back, um, lots of swimming space, no sharp rocks, no sharp sticks, because uh, he does like to charge about every now and again when he gets upset about things, so I don't want him injuring himself. So on that front, we should be good. For filtration, we're using the Fluval FX2. I think that's fine for a tank this size. It seems to be coping okay. It is a big fish. It's only one of them, but it is a big and dirty fish. So I think a canister filter is good. Um, maybe we'll go with a sump one day, but I have the FX2. I do like the FX range, so I thought I'd stick with it. But I've also added a small power head here. So what I had noticed is the flow from the FX2 wasn't quite enough. So if Humphrey left his little poopy messages uh, along here. They weren't getting it all the way over to the intake for the FS6, which was on that side. So intake's there, output's there. So I've added this little power head, which I can direct the flow onto the substrate and just kind of gently waft all the poop and debris over towards this end, where it will hopefully get picked up by the intake on that side. Um, Test that I've done so far, I've only been doing this for a few days, so it seems to do the trick. Um, but obviously I have a few of these power heads so I can add more if it isn't actually doing that but that should keep the surface clean without having to do too many poopy vacuums and then up top I've got one of these polycarbonate lids it's a twin wall, very thin one but it just keeps the moisture down and traps the heat in and then to power everything I've used my original Felix Smart the Felix Smart is basically just uh, a smart controller for your aquarium so as you can see here I've got the lights, the filters the power heads, heaters, all that controlled off one device. So there's eight sockets on the back of it. Um, you can add further probes and stuff to take various temperature readings, but I have two Felix Marks, one on this and one on Megatank. Uh, this one, I don't have any of the probes for it. 
or I'm using the probes for it on mega tanks. So this I'm basically just using as a smart controller. So the box next to it is an Elitech ST1000 uh, heater controller because I don't have the temperature probe for the Felix Smart, so I'm using this to control my heaters because what I don't want to do is cook any fish. I've always used heater controllers with everything. Um, I'm using this one just purely because I had it spare. I have a few of these and there are other options available. I've got ink birds and things that I can run on other tanks, but yeah, I just had that one spare. It looks good sitting up there. I've got it on the little shelf. Everything's good, um, but this works quite well. As you can see there, it's on cool because it's trying to cool um, because the heaters aren't on. That's how hot the water is without heating it at all. It's just that hot in here, but I don't currently have it hooked up to any kind of cooler. So it's just, I'll need to turn down the heating in this room basically. The more tanks I get up and running, the hotter the room gets naturally because water is a very good holder of heat. Uh, but that's ideal because I'm going to move my discus down here soon and I want it quite warm. Right, so the time's come to get Humphrey in there and um, made sure that the temperatures match. They do because it's the room that's heated rather than the tanks. This has been running for a couple of days. We're happy with that. He's ready to get out of there. So let's get him out. I'll get my medium large-ish net, which Humphrey knows what's coming now. He's not going to be that happy about, but we'll get him out and we'll get him moved. I want to move him into this side, so I might just put my fingers in as a little bit of temptation. Nah, you're not going to fall for that, are you? So Humphrey is a good 12 inches, if not more. I'll just get him in before he breaks the net. talked about before how his cock, which is his nuchal hump on the top of his head, had deflated when he was a bit upset. <laughs> Hasn't happened this time, so hopefully we'll get away with it, but we'll give him some food, see if he's interested. He's only just moved. But yeah, seems happy enough. I think that was a stress-free move. Yeah, he's my little water puppy. I'm glad he's okay and this should be his forever home. He should be able to live here out until his final days. Um, like I said, he was about 12 inches long. Don't know if he's finished growing yet, um, but yeah, he's an awesome fish. Yeah, very much a water puppy. He does like to play with you um, and bite you. But yeah, he's a great one. But that's not all I've got to show you. So if you join me on my live streams, this is now the backdrop to my live streams every Friday, 9 p.m. UK time uh, with my co-host Humphrey here. Um, but I have done further work in the fish room. I'll give Megatank a feed while I tell you about it, but here is a new fish in Megatank. Megatank is my eight foot by four foot by three foot DIY wooden tank. Uh, and I decided I really liked the silver dollars and um, just having that are smaller compared to the big fish and here there are smaller fish that zooms up and down schools really well uh, happy with them so I went to my local fish shop Maidenhead Aquatics in Sheffield and picked out uh, a new larger silver dollar just a plain one and um, let's give them a feed and see if they're hungry Yeah, all the fish in here are doing great. I've got my automatic water change system tuned in. Everything seems to be working quite well. Happy fish, happy tank, touch wood. But yeah, a little bit aggressive is old Brian. So Brian is my giant Grammy, but we're calling it assertive rather than aggressive. He does chase other fish away. The snakehead is very much the boss of the tank, but is also really chilled, so it doesn't show really any aggression whatsoever other than when someone gets out of line so if Brian has a pop at him he definitely puts him in his place. Um, Snakehead likes to eat first, Brian likes to eat always but the Oscars and the other fish they just zoom around grabbing what they can and they all seem to be growing well so I'm perfectly happy with this tank but I still want a few more fish in here. So while I was picking up the extra silver dollar 
picked up a few more as well. And it's these guys. So I've picked up some spotted silver dollars. I've got three of them. They're in a small grow out tank at the minute because they are just too small. They'll just be a mere amuse bush for the big fish at the moment. Um, so I don't want that to happen. So we've got them in this little grow out tank. So it'll be quite a while before they get big enough, but they're eating heartily and they're a bit skittish in this tank. So I think I need to get them into a bit of a darker tank, get them a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more swimming space. And some more decorations to hide behind if they want to while they get comfortable and then we can start feeding them up to get them big enough. And I think that'll be a cool little group. So we've got one banded, three spotted and two regular silver dollars. They'll do really well. And there's one more fish too. We've got this guy, it's a marbled grouper. Again, he's only maybe four inches, something like that at the moment. Got a lot of growing to do, but he will be a future monster. He was just, he, he looked too awesome not to pick him up as well. I really love the colorings as well as the size and the shape and the way they just hang out. They are voracious eaters as well. This one will pretty much have a go at anything just to see if he can fit it in his mouth. Um, so I need to get him a bit bigger as well. I don't think there'll be anything in Mega Tank that he'll be able to fit in his mouth. He should top out somewhere between one and two feet. I think they get to 12 inches regularly in the hobby, but rarely get to the full capacity of two feet. But you never know. With my big tank, with enough space, he might make it. Um, but they, they just look mean. I think they look great. Mean as in grumpy, not mean as in aggressive killer fish or anything like that. It's just the way he sits and doesn't do a whole lot of moving, but does move around a little bit and just looks awesome. What have we got going on? We've got Humphrey in his new tank. That's done. He's happy. He's okay. We've got the new little juvenile silver dollars and the marbled goby in this tank growing out a little bit. What we want to do is move them over to one of these tanks. Um, this tank, which was Humphrey's old tank, can be the discus tank. So this is just shy five foot, I think. Clean that up, get that ready, bring the discus down here, and then that's that done. This just shy of four foot tank is actually going to go over there and be a grow out. So the silver dollars and the marble goby and anything else that I decide to put into mega tank that isn't big enough to go into mega tank is going to go into this tank, but it'll be over there. Those tanks will either get broken down completely and repurposed and moved over here. But my plan is to build some tanks to put here as some other projects still to come. Yeah, and then mega tank sanity and structural engineering aside is here for the long haul so this is going to be here for as long as it can possibly be made to last and um, i want to see these fish as much as i can possibly achieve reach the full potential so yes there will be some monster fish in there but i want to get a good tank i don't want it to be stuffed full and just going oh look how big my fish are but i'm interested in getting this right um, I'm really happy with how things are going so far. I know I've talked in the past about doing stingrays and peacock bass and things like that and I do still want to attempt some of those things but I think once we've got those ones growing up and potentially maybe one or two other that'll be it for Mega Tank uh, and these guys. It's great. It's finally working out how I wanted it to. So the silver dollars like I said they're still a little bit skitty so we might move them once I get the other tank sorted out. Um, and hopefully make them feel a little bit more comfortable. They are feeding well. Um, the marbled goby feeding really well. Um, actually already on pellets, taking them quite happily. Um, the one thing in my research told me about them is if it can fit in their mouth, they will at least have a go at it. And he seems to be doing quite well with that. Happy that he is on pellets and that will be the staple diet, but I'm giving everyone a little bit of a treat today. See if you'll have some of this. little bit of fish or are we doing that thing where we're on camera we're not going to come and touch that every time I've fed him so far he's pretended he's a rock for maybe 10-20 seconds and then come over and readily snapped it up I'll just take a few steps back and get out of the way and see if that interests them at all. Oh, 
that definitely works. Me getting out of the way is the route to success. Silver dollars having a wee go as well. Ah, there you go, they got a little bit of it. And while we're here, we'll give the baby Fahaka a wee go. It'd be rude not to give the big guys a, a little taste. Not that any of it lasts very long. But they are some happy fishies. So thank you very much for watching everyone, there's going to be more of these videos so if you like this kind of stuff please click that subscribe button, come and see what happens with the next few updates. Things are changing and moving around, I'm going in slightly different directions with what I'm trying to achieve in the fish room, trying to get things tidied up a bit and a little bit more working for me rather than it just being a complete mess which it has been sometimes. Um, so come on Friday nights 9pm UK time, come and join me for my weekly live stream. We can chat about all these plans and anything else that's going on in the world and some games and quizzes and giveaways and things like that. Or click the subscribe button, join, click, 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 click,